Hello, everyone. Welcome to our online Bible study. Pastor David Averill, good to be with you. Last week, I um, took a brief break uh, to get ready for the rest of the study for the summer. And some of the things that we've been covering, as a reminder, are resources that are available to you on BibleHub.com. Resources for your own Bible study that you can use to grow in your study of Scripture and grow closer to God. So our topic today is about commentaries. Commentaries provide further instruction about different Bible passages. So one of the commentaries that we actually have in the church library, and that's right behind the sanctuary, is the New Interpreter's Bible. The New Interpreter's Bible provides commentary on the whole Bible. If I want to look up a particular passage, I go to look it up by the chapter and the verse. So I'm going to John chapter 21 today. And then it will actually provide an in-depth commentary of that scripture. So I wanted to show you kind of what it looked like. So there, the, yeah, my lighting is not that great in the office, so you can't see that. Anyhow, commentary sets can be helpful, but the thing about the commentary sets is they can cover a broad range of the books in the Bible, and you can get a consistent commentary set from one publisher, but the commentaries in that set may not be the best commentary for that specific book of the Bible. You may have to mix and match different commentary sets to get something that you would like. Some of the commentary sets are focused more on preaching, more for the lay level, more for the pastor level or the academic level. So you kind of have to find one that works for you. Uh, Barclays, uh, William Barclay, is probably the best known and <clears throat> is, is one commentary set that we also have for at the church here. So I'm going to go ahead and share our scripture for today from John chapter 21. It's very relevant to our discussion. I'm going to pull up BibleHub.com again. <clears throat> Jesus and the beloved disciple, from John 21. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper to ask, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain until I return, what is that to you? You follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the brothers that this disciple would not die. However, Jesus did not say that he would not die, but only if I want him to remain until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and has written them down and who we know that his testimony is true. There are many more things that Jesus said. If all of them were written down, I suppose that not even the world itself would have space for the books that would be written. That's one of the things I love about this particular scripture is it kind of acknowledges that there's much more to the gospel story than even what we probably have in the four gospels. Some of the four gospels have consistent stories that are shared between all four of them. Some of them have stories unique to each gospel. But the one thing that we want to acknowledge is that the story of Jesus is is so much more than even what the Bible reveals it to be. There's much more to G Jesus that we can learn and grow in, even in our time. Commentary, if I want to get a commentary on this particular chapter, in BibleHub.com, I go up to the, scroll up to the top, and I click Comment. And that will provide me with parallel commentaries. All right, I need to go to John 21, 20, so that I can get the exact commentary for the verse that I want. And I have these commentaries. So you have several of these commentaries are free. One of them will focus more on the Greek. 
got some of these. Matthew Henry's commentary is probably the most user-friendly of these free commentaries that you will see in there. So let's go ahead and take a look at Matthew Henry's commentary here. He says on this particular passage, sufferings, pains, and death will appear formidable even to the experienced Christian, but in the hope to glorify God, to leave a sinful world, and to be present with his Lord, he becomes ready to obey the Redeemer's call and to follow him through death to glory. It is the will of Christ that his disciples should mind their own duty and not be curious about future events, either as to themselves or others. Many things we are apt to be anxious about, which are nothing to us. Intermeddling, we must quietly work and mind our own business. Many curious questions are put about by the counsels of God and the state of the unseen world, as to which we may say, what is this to us? Those who cannot agree in the same terms of art and the application of them may yet agree in the same scripture terms and to love one another. All right. So really appreciated that there was some dissension. There were some rumors among the disciples. But to covet do not covet, to covet another neighbor's property, another neighbor's fate, another neighbor's destiny. That is to separate yourself from God. What God desires for us to focus on, and this is what I think Henry is getting at, it's not what is going to happen to the disciple to our left or what is going to happen to the disciple to our right, but what is our fate? What is our destiny? What is our call? Let us appreciate that. Let us give thanks to God for that. It is God to give what God desires and what is it to us if he chooses this fate for that person or that fate for that person? I probably would have not gone to that angle or gone to that perspective had I not used that commentary. So you can see how the commentary could be a helpful tool for us to learn scripture together. It can be a helpful tool to uncover. Even just as we learned a couple of weeks ago to the go to the original languages and how those can be a rich source of us learning to uncover words and meanings that aren't there. Commentaries can be equally helpful to us as we learn to appreciate what God has given us. May we learn to appreciate what God has given us in, for our place, for our time, for our perspective, uh, and not necessarily look over the hedge and see that the grass is always greener on the other side, because it's not. As Jesus reminded us, do not worry, uh, for tomorrow has enough trouble for its itself. That's what he said in Matthew 6. Consider the lilies, they neither toil nor spin. But I tell you, Solomon in all of his glory cannot compare to such as these. So if God feeds, uh, you know, feeds and clothes and takes care of the nature and takes care of the birds, will he not also then take care of you? Are you a little faith? So we need to have faith in the Lord Jesus, for he is our yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Let's pray together. Oh, Lord Jesus, forgive us sometimes where we focus our business on what others are getting, what others have, instead of appreciating what we do ourselves have in you, the love that you have for us, the abiding presence that you, that you offer to us. The assurance of salvation that you provide for us, that where I am, there you will be also. Thank you for the mansions that you've prepared for us, the place that you've prepared for us, and the place that you have for us in your kingdom here and now on this earth. For all of these things, we give you thanks and praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Bye, everyone. I'll see you next week.